We are Mike and Taylor, and these are our dogs, Penny and Lucy. We sold our home and nearly everything we owned, moved aboard a 40-foot boat, and sailed from Seattle. This is the story of us making our way. Welcome back, friends. Just after 2 a.m. this morning, we picked up our anchor in Costa Rica for the last time, pointed our bow south, and carefully navigated ourselves out of port and through the driftwood and whale-filled waters of Gulf Vito. But not too long after sunrise, we noticed something very strange floating on the horizon. What this thing is, I have never seen anything like it. It looks like a floating island, like it's big. Okay, we're gonna need to make some fine movements here. We're, uh, we're crossing a debris line right now. There's like this uh, giant thing. I have no freaking idea what it is. It's like light colored. It's definitely not like a capsized boat or a life raft or anything like that. I really like, um, when I saw it, I changed course to get closer to it, try to figure it out. I'm a little afraid to get too close to it because there's a lot of big debris around it. Um, and I don't know. I mean, it's huge. It's unlike anything I've ever seen floating on the ocean. Just on that floating thing, is, it must be a dead whale, though it doesn't resemble a whale. Um, but I just can't think of what else would be floating that high in the water. They do float really high in the water when they float like the gas. But most of them, pictures I saw, like they look like whales. Nothing just looked like a lumpy mass, so. We motor sailed in the light and shifty winds, dodging driftwood and whales in all stages of life and death, apparently, trying to maintain our speed so that we could reach the first anchorage in Panama before sundown.
As we approached the islands, we were met with large swell and some reefs to navigate through. And yet another whale. That's a sleeping whale. Oh, just right, just right here, just right, right there. There's a baby whale too. Oh man, that's so cool, but it's also so scary, guys. Look at that. <laughs> and as we came around the corner, our first anchorage in Panama was in sight, 16 hours after leaving Costa Rica. We sailed to Panama! Panama. <laughs> wow. Penny's gonna like that beach. Oh yeah, I think we're all gonna like that beach. Long day. Long day. We got a sleepy crew. But we got a sleepy crew in Panama, baby. We made it to Panama. We made it to Panama. <laughs> We made it! We made it! We made it! Oh, what a good girl! Yeah! Islands are like fake postcard islands with the palm trees and the white sand and the water. I mean, honestly. After living in a marina for the past month, in crocodile-filled waters, being back out on anchor, in a new country, with scenery like this, clear water to swim in, and an island all to ourselves, was extra special. And we were sure to soak it all up. But one thing was for sure, no one had it more fun than the dogs. Tired puppy. It's a real <laughs> tired puppy.
muy pequeño. I don't you want it to be green coconuts? Yeah, I don't know if this is good at all, but I hear water in there. <laughs> Not a very good shape. <laughs> Not sharp, it's got no weight to it. One hour later. This is attempt number. I can't even remember. Two thousand years later. How's it going? Not good. Okay. I don't know. I don't think you need a new machete. One eternity later. Did you make a cocoa? Yeah, I got one. Damn! How many? A little bit of a blister. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Mark. Is it refreshing and delicious? Yeah, it is. Mmm. Wow, Miguelito. I did it. You made a cocoa. I figured cocoa out the butter knife. <laughs> I figured out the key. What's the key? You're trying to just take off all the husk ah. to expose the nut, and then you crack open the nut. Ah. And you need a bigger machete. <laughs> yeah. Or a sharper one, but I did it. Nice work. I did it. You've been trying to do for a long time. <laughs> this morning at our desk here and then the rain came in and Starlink actually does not work in like heavy rain. It just loses its, you know, it loses its signal. So the internet is down and the rain is here and there's really nothing else to do except to watch the rain and I guess clean the boat. So Mike's up with a brush taking advantage of all the fresh water and giving us a support. Today we're making a jump to our second anchorage in Panama and I'm really looking forward to this because some friends were there a week or two ago and they had like insanely clear water. So we're only like five miles away and the water out here looks really clear so I'm stoked. But so far Panama's been great. That last, uh, that last island was like idyllic. It was kind of the, like when I pictured where we'd be cruising, you know, like white sand beach with palm trees and that's kind of what I had in mind, so.
bumped into something. <laughs> we never saw it. I'm guessing it must have been like a turtle or something that swam away. We never saw it, but we felt and heard it. Uh, Taylor's on bow watch. Dolphins come by and then they like something snapped the lure like right off. And I'm god, I hope it wasn't a dolphin, but I've never heard of anyone actually having a lure taken by a dolphin. But that's all we got. Penny's ready to get there. We dropped our anchor in the archipelago called the Secas, a privately owned collection of 14 volcanic islands, 13 of which are uninhabited. An area maintained in dedication to conservation of this spectacular piece of ocean and earth. Oh my god. <laughs> Suffice it to say, this was some of the most incredible water we had ever been in. Oh, this is incredible. Wow. Kind of running out of beach because it's almost high tide, but look at that water. I think we're already running out of beach here. Might be time to go. With only a couple hours till sunset, it was time for us to get in this beautiful ocean. Turtle. 
Back on board, as the sun went down behind the palm trees, we became suddenly surrounded by dancing and frolicking baby humpback whales and their very patient mothers. I think that's mom. I think the baby's just over here doing barrel rolls. <laughs> we soon realized something pretty incredible. These protected waters are the only place in the world known to be visited by both the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere migrating humpback whales. We were actually watching Southern Hemisphere humpbacks who had left their feeding grounds in Antarctica to come here to breed and raise their calves. As always, thank you so much for watching and be sure to join us next time. As we wake up to a scary morning, we're making a sort of emergency, quite hasty exit here. We have more incredible whale encounters. As soon as you go down, you can hear whales. And we press on to a UNESCO World Heritage Site where more amazing and terrifying wildlife awaits us. I think it was one week ago, a crocodile killed a human man right here and ate him, so... <laughs> Just like right... Jeez. Oh, that's the